Yeah, so then like the next thing is to have Phil just come and go, ah, you know, I'm a crazy Russian detailer. Welcome back to Detail Garage. Today is very exciting because we have a Ferrari 575 Marinello in the shop. Yeah, this is a beautiful Ferrari that we picked up in Vegas. We uh, won it from the same guy we won the Aston with. Um, he did not know how to bet on anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like so, uh, as you can see, he also didn't take care of this car either. It's very, very neglected, full of swirls, scratches, and it's just filthy. I mean, you know, just look at that. It's, yeah. it's, it's a very dirty car, and um, the interior is not that bad, but the outside is pretty much thrashed. The wheels are looking very dirty. The paintwork is scratched. We need to take care of this car. We need to make it look good. So what are we going to do today, Alex? Uh, well, first things first, like we did last time, we need to strip the paint. We got to take off all the contaminants. So Citra's washing gloss is going to be perfect for that. And for the scratches and swirls, uh, we're thinking maybe a simple paint correction. Maybe we can get away with the glaze since this color doesn't really show a lot of scratches or swirls, uh, at least thus far. So we're going to need a clay, use a clay bar, maybe a clay block. Um, I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. So it definitely feels fairly rough even underneath all the dirt. So the clay block will help to remove all those contaminants, make the paint feel smooth. Like Alex said, the silver color does hide a lot of the imperfection, the swirls and scratches. If we put a glaze on it, we might be able to just hide a lot of those imperfections, make the car look a lot better at a glance. And um, I mean, it's not going to matter because, you know, everyone's only going to see us blast by them and then, you know, they're not going to get a good, uh, uh, like a close enough look at the car. And then we'll get another pink slip to do till another car later on. Yeah, so. exactly. So. I can fly. <laughs> 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 I fly totally. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving along the car, we're going to pop the hood, and then we're going to look at this big lump. This is a gigantic V12. Falcon can open the hood. There we go. Um, yep. There's an engine. There's an engine. <laughs> See how many horses we can count on this car. Um, I count one, one two, two, three, three four, five, six. All the six, cams. Seven. Yeah. It's right. Okay. Seven, there's six, yeah, seven. I think it's obvious this is a Ferrari. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then like 500, like right here. You know. Yeah. So. Um, uh, I got what you got. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's smart. So what's happening with these big tubes, Alex? Like, what's this all about? Those are intake ducts. This car actually has a functional ram air intake where air goes in there. Get channeled through these holes straight in there. Very cool. The air box, intake. Absolutely. So this engine, not a lot of grease, not a lot of oil. Well, I mean, there's some, some seepage from around, but it doesn't look like it had any giant explosions. There's no coolant leaks like we've seen in the <coughs> past. But I mean, it ain't clean in here. There's a lot of dirt, there's a lot of dust. Yeah, it's pretty apparent that uh, they never bothered to clean this at all. Your technicians, you know, Ferrari techs, they, they think this car is perfect already, but we know it's not. <laughs> yeah, fairly lazy. So we're probably going to start off this full detail with the dirtiest part of the car, which is typically the engine bay. So we're going to go in here, we're going to wash out all this contamination. We're going to use some orange degreaser to take care of the thicker grime that starts to build up around certain areas. And then we're going to uh, just use some parts cleaning brushes like the goat brush or the detailing brush to get in the harder to reach nooks and crannies and then hose it all out just to get all this contamination out of the engine bay. All this gunk. Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, well, after the engine bay, after we've sprayed all the water and all the grease everywhere, then we'll be able to wash the whole outside of the car and wash all the contamination out. So it makes sense to start with the filthiest part and then clean lighter and lighter as you go. Uh, something else that needs attention are definitely the wheels. Um, looking down, like, especially like the face of the wheel is fairly dirty. Most of the stuff wipes off, but it goes all the way into the inside of the barrel, and that stuff is a whole lot thicker. The brake calipers, they're supposed to be black, and you can see they look more brown than black. So all this stuff we're going to be able to take off using just a few uh, wheel cleaning products. Either si I'm, I'm thinking we should use the Signature Series on this. Signature Series wheel cleaner will be great, Absolutely. especially if we get in there with the goat brush. We can clean off these little nuts right here, these little cracks and crevices that you won't be get able to get a traditional uh, concourse brush or anything on mm -hmm. there. So Yeah, on, on, on the face of the rim, yeah. We definitely need to get into the barrel, either the ferret brush or the concourse brush, just to get a deep clean inside. I like to do the fender liners too. Um, you can see 
how like chalky and brown and gray it's, it's looking in there. It's supposed to look black. So we're gonna hit the inside of the wheel wells with a long handle brush just to clean all the mud out. Then we'll probably do uh, some bare bones, bare bones on the inside, yeah. Bones, yeah. And then that'll look fresh. You know, there's some dressing on the tires. <clears throat> uh, what's happening with the paint here? Like the hood looks the worst on the whole car, which is it's, it's the biggest part. Yeah, on, you know what? On the sides, there's not that many scratches or swirls, but mm -hmm. I, I do see a lot of water runoff. I see a lot of scratches and swirls. Um, of course, I'd be a lot. It'd be a lot easier to see once it's nice and clean. But even while it's dirty, you can still see a lot of scratches in this world mm -hmm. built up on top. So. Absolutely, yeah, and just like wash mark. Yeah. You can tell that this car has been sitting out on a lot in the desert for months and months. I mean, it's just covered in the sand and the filth just from being outside. Coming down the back, just kind of more of the same on the wheels, on the paint, and look like. What's cool is we removed the license plate, and you can actually see. You can still see that right there. <laughs> the, we removed the, the license etching. plate to protect my identity. And you can still see there's a lot of filth that's been built up on there. And yeah, that probably need to be clay barred or use a clay block in order yeah. to get rid of that yeah, sort of absolutely. contamination. This car is filthy. I'm over it. Let's take this outside, and let's get to detailing. And then this is when the music goes boom, 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 You know, the worst part about having a V12 is you have to have like, like all those ignition coils and spark plugs too. It's just like so much extra stuff that like you don't think about. Like two air filters, like every maintenance is just so much. So we're starting with the engine bay. It's really, really dirty. And uh, we have some materials prepared over here uh, on the cart. Uh, like we have some orange degreaser, some signature series orange degreaser. We've already diluted it six to one in our professional spray bottles so we get a nice uh, even uh, spray pattern so we can mist over the whole engine not have any problem. We have a few tools, uh, flag tip wheel and body brush. This is great to use on engine bays, engine compartments, and some goat brushes. This is a plastic handle and ferrule brush with a real boar's hair bristle, which is nice to clean any hard to reach areas around the engine. Now before we get started, there is a little prep work that we have to do here and some key notes that we want to let you guys know. Uh, just so you know, it's safe to spray water inside the engine bay, so we can hose this down, nothing bad's going to happen to it. I understand right here, these are the intake ducts, and these are designed to have water go in them, and they do not make their way inside the air box. Uh, there is a drain there, so they will be drained, but just, you know, just to be safe, we're going to go ahead and plug those up anyways. And also, the battery back here, it is exposed. You can still spray it with water. What's inside a battery is water itself. And also there's a trickle charger here and we just want to make sure that the triple charger is waterproof and this one, in this case this uh, trickle charger here is waterproof so you can go ahead and spray that there's no problems now one last thing you need to consider before you do any sort of detailing on the engine bay you need to make sure the engine is cool to the touch so we were driving the car earlier but it's been sitting over lunchtime we had the hood open the engine has since cooled down and it's cool to the touch you don't want to be spraying cold water on hot iron hot steel hot aluminum parts because they might um, the temperature differential might cause it to crack and then you're gonna have a bad time because then you need to replace the V12 engine which is not fun at all. So this engine is cool to the touch, ready to go. We're gonna go ahead, plug up the air intakes and get started with the detailing. Ow! <laughs> what the f Somebody needs the shocks replaced. <laughs> I wonder if I got that on camera. I hope you did. <laughs>
Okay, so in uh, reviewing the footage from uh, the detail, we figured out we forgot to actually explain what we're doing as we're doing it. So you can see that Alex and I are starting by cleaning the wheels of the car first. Now we're going ahead and we're using Signature Series wheel cleaner to loosen the, the filth and the brake dust and grime. These wheels weren't, you know, terrible. Uh, we were able to use Signature Series. We're using wheel, uh, normal car soap in the bucket. Alex is using the Concour detailing brush. That's to get deep into the barrel. Anyway, we're starting with the wheels first because we don't want to uh, leave water standing on the paint any longer than we absolutely have to. You can see he's using the flag tip body and wheel brush now. It's a very soft brush, not gonna scratch any rims. But we're doing the wheels first because they're the filthiest. If we splatter any of that grime around the car, we're uh, gonna clean the car afterwards anyway, so we're not gonna cause any damage. We're not leaving water spots on the paint. So this is, it makes sense to start with the wheels first. If you're gonna clean the engine bay, it also makes sense to clean the engine bay first before you do anything else. Now we're rinsing down the actual car using the pressure washer. We're using uh, citrus washing gloss. Uh, is that you with a foam cannon, Alex, here? Yeah, I'm using citrus washing gloss and I'm using about four ounces of soap in there and the rest of water and um, spraying the whole car down from head to toe because we need to strip out everything that's on the paint. Absolutely, yeah. So because we want to strip off any of uh, the wax or anything that's already on the paint, we're using a little extra soap and then uh, the extra citrus power uh, helps to pull off any wax or sealant that's on the paint right now. Yeah, and right here we are, uh, you know, rubbing it down with the chamois wash mitt. Um, we're just going in a uh, snake light pattern, you know, mostly straight lines. We're starting from top to bottom, just getting all the contaminants off the surface. Absolutely. You, you want to use microfiber, good quality microfiber, whenever you're doing, uh, whenever you wipe the car. And basically, like you see, like we're using the foam can and we're using high pressure water. The less you touch a car, the better, because the less friction you put on the car, less chances you have of installing any swirls or scratches as you clean. So we can use a Chemical Guys microfiber drying towel to simply wipe off this headlight and body without scratching the surface. Nope, nope, ain't got time. So you can see we're using the MetroVac Master Blaster to remove the standing water from the paintwork. It's also the perfect tool to get all the water out from the cracks and crevices behind badges, emblems, door jams, all that stuff that pours out of the car as soon as you drive away because you couldn't get to it with a towel. This is the perfect tool to use to dry off all the hard to reach parts on your car. So we're moving on in the detail on this Ferrari and uh, as you can hear, even though the surface is already clean, there's a lot of contamination and pollution stuck on the paintwork. Now that makes the paint not feel smooth as glass and that contamination can also cause the paint to oxidize, makes it easier to scratch the paint because if you ever rub across, you might dislodge some of these sharper contaminants and will mar the paintwork. So we need to take all that stuff out before we can cause more damage and before we do any further detailing steps like polishing or spreading wax. If you take off this contamination first, it makes it easier to polish. You're not removing and swirling up that garbage in the polishing pad. You don't have to do more passes. You're getting a better cut. And when you take it off, the wax and sealant can actually stick directly to the paint. It'll look better and last longer doing it. So to save some time with the decontamination steps, Alex and I are using the clay block rather than a traditional clay bar. So this is a synthetic rubberized material instead of a piece of synthetic detailing clay. All you need to use it is some detailing spray. I'm using some P40 in a professional bottle. It's very easy to use. You take your block and you start scrubbing until it feels smooth. So right away, it started rough and then it's nice and smooth. Then if you look in the detail spray, you can start to see it's running off. It's not looking totally clear or totally blue anymore. It's actually looking kind of brown and yellow. That's all the contamination being dislodged and pulled out from the surface of the paintwork. So it's important you use a lot of lubricant when you use a clay bar or clay block. It's 
especially with a clay block. And then once you finish an area, go ahead, take a microfiber towel and just pick up all the contamination, all the spent detail spray, and then buff it dry. There we go. Now, you can use the clay block on any other surface that you would use a traditional clay bar on. So a lot of people ask, what can you clay? What can you polish? What can you wax? It's all in the same areas. Anything painted, anything shiny. If we had any chrome, I could point to that or anything clear. So on the vehicle like this, I could do uh, all the paint work on the metal panels, on the plastic panels like the bumper. I can do the headlights. I can do the windows, the taillights even the wheels if we needed to. So that's where we're going to use a clay bar. So when we go to polish, it'll be nice and smooth as glass. And the best part about the clay block, if I were to drop it, <laughs> pick it up, put some detail spray, wipe it off. clay barring the surface of the Ferrari we removed all the contaminants now now it's time for us to polish and we're going to be using our V36 and our V30 on this Ferrari so let me grab Matt hey Matt come over here stop being lazy Good enough. So, do you know how to do a test spot? I do, but I think we should show our viewers how to do a test spot because I don't, I'm not very familiar with it. So, All right. let's try it out on the Ferrari. It's pretty simple, really. What you want to do is you, mask, you want to mask off a certain area of the car because you want to test out which compound works best on the actual paint of the vehicle. All right, now that we got a certain area, so we're going to be using what, V36 and V38? V38, yeah. All right, so we're going to be cutting with V36, so yep. we'll just do a 50-50. So in the, doing the test spot, what he's going to be looking for is the choice of pads and the choice of chemical to see how it reacts with the paint. A lot of different paints have different clear coat. Uh, some are soft, some are hard, so that's why we do test spots to test it out before you go into doing the whole car. Exactly. So we're going to be using our V36 and orange pad on this side and we're going to see what kind of results it gives us. If it comes out a little bit too abrasive and it mars up the paint a little bit, we know to switch to a softer uh, pad such as a white uh, quantum pad that we're going to be using as well. So we'll probably do V36 and a quantum pad. If that doesn't work, well then we'll do uh, further test spots to, to try out V38 and the white pad, see if that's going to work. But I think... Uh, I think an orange pad might work. I think an orange Usually, pad's gonna work. Uh, you're going to go straight to an orange pad, which is what everybody does, because that's what you want to do when you're cutting. Um, but like I said, because every paint's different, we're going to test out both just to be completely sure before we work on this whole car. Cool. Yeah. So let's get started. Awesome. The big brain on Jen. I know. I thought you didn't know how to do a test spot. See? You? We work we work we're together. We're great together. together. God, it's like we're meant to be, Jen. Oh, Jesus. Jen's such a pro. Three? Speed setting three? Uh, spread it out completely with one. I know, that's where I'm at. I'm kind of holding it at an angle. Derek? You're doing it? Do it all the way for you. There you go.
let's see the results. There you go, that got a lot of the scratches and swirls out. Yeah, that actually looks really good. There's so you can see like from here to here. Yeah. So you see all of these yeah, I see swirls. The, there's a lot of swirls here. Really this is probably like a 92% correction right here. That's yeah, actually it looks really good. good. And as you can see, there's no marring. It actually took it out pretty easily with just V36 and the orange quantum pad. And just remember, now with the quantum pads, before we would tell you to do five drops of the product, but because now you have that circle in the middle to disperse the heat, you don't have to do that fifth dot, obviously. Yeah, so four <laughs> drops would be perfect. It's still, still enough. enough product. So since there's no marring, what does that tell you about the paint? So it's good. It's good to go with an orange pad. It's not a soft clear coat or soft paint. There you go. So we don't have to switch to a softer pad to use the V36 for cutting. We can use the white pad for V38 when we're doing our polishing, right? Yep, which I already got ready for you. Oh, look at that. There you go. Isn't that awesome when it's already prepped for you? I know, right? OK, so now we're going to move on to using V38 with the white pad, our quantum pad. Now, if the paint was not taking well to the orange pad and started marring, we would have moved on to using the white pad with the V36 on this other test spot. But because we saw it achieve pretty good results, we're just moving on to the polishing. That sounds great. Fair enough. Fair enough. Cool. So let's do the V38. Go for it, Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matt's really messing out. Now, what speed setting is ideal for polishing with a white pad? Um, 35 to 40 on, awesome. on this one. So right now I have it on speed setting 35. What's really awesome is that the machine sometimes does the work for you. Like, the torque is pretty cool because there's no vibration, but it's also, it's, it's like moving forward. <laughs> yeah, especially with these new quantum pads, it spreads it out a lot better. It yeah. feels a lot stiffer. Get even coverage with it. The heat distribution too. That looks about good. There you go. I'll wipe off with a different microfiber. For wiping off the paint, we're just using our workhorse, the green workhorse towels. Let's check that out. All right, let's see. It's definitely a lot shinier. There you go. Look at the metallic fleck. Yeah, that looks really good. Uh. It really brings out that metallic color. Yeah, and it's funny because a lot of people think, oh, it's a Ferrari. They think it's going to be a lot harder to polish, a lot more sensitive. It's not. It's just like doing a Toyota Corolla. It's same same style of paint. It's pretty hard, so you don't necessarily have to be going into it with the most abrasive compounds or anything. You can get good results with V36 and V38. So now if V36 wasn't taking out the scratches and swirls in the paint, you can always move down to a more abrasive compound, which would be V34. If that didn't work, then you move down to V32. That's kind of how the V-Line series works. Uh, it's most abrasive to least abrasive. So V32 is our most abrasive compound. Uh, but you always want to start higher and move lower because you don't want to start off too aggressive. Yeah, the whole point is for you guys to save as much clear coat as you can so you can polish out in the future. So, um, and also to reduce any kind of uh, marring that might occur. But since there's, no need f there's no, eh, since there's no need for you to be doing all of that, that's fine. Yeah, so doing a test spot was great. So now we're going to work on doing the rest of the vehicle. Uh, and then after this, we'll be applying a glaze. So we'll show you how to do a glaze as well. Yeah, let's get started. Always remember to be using polishing pad conditioner. If you, have an, if you have a new pad, two sprays is good. If you're continuing, just one spray is good.
So now that we finished the whole car with V36 and V38, we're going to move on to applying a glaze. Now a glaze is great for your vehicle to cover up any existing swirl scratches that are in the paint. It has swirl filling capabilities. Although we did do a paint correction on this car, anything that may have been left behind, we're just going to get filled in with a glaze. So we have a lot of glazes in our line. We're choosing Glossworks glaze because Glossworks is great for any metallic finishes. Whereas black light or white light, for example, are good for uh, specific colored paints. Yeah, so this, this uh, glaze right here looks good on metallic fleck paint jobs. It also looks good for those high vibrant colors. With the Glossworks glaze, you can apply it by hand uh, using any microfiber applicator, or you can do it by machine for a lot ease of use, yep. faster. It gets it done faster, nice and even. And it also helps with the drying time because there's less material for it to harden up and dry. So it's uh, easy to wipe off and buff off. So we're going to use our blue um, quantum pads and uh, the Torque 10 FX to do that. And with this, um, what is the speed we're going to be using? Uh, usually the speed you want to be using to apply uh, glaze as the lowest, set, lowest speed setting on the actual machine. So for instance, uh, if you use the Torque, uh, the speed setting is going to be 15 on the dial, so which is the first knot up. So. Yeah. Cool, let's get to it. Yeah, let's start. Ladies first. <laughs> so the same as when you're polishing or doing any uh, compounds, you're going to just do four uh, small dots on your pad and then uh, spread it on your vehicle. On the surface. Yeah. And like all our products, a little bit goes a long way. So we're going to start off with the hood again. So Alex, is there any time where um, you'd want to do a higher speed setting? I know spreading is like 15, but to work it in even more when there's more swirls or scratches, do you want to do like a 35 uh, or 40? Not necessarily. Uh, usually you want to kick it up a little bit if you don't, uh, if you didn't already do a paint correction. Uh, for instance, it's say you wash the car, you clear the car, and you want to go ahead and apply a glaze. You can spread it, you can uh, put it up to the second speed setting. So in applying a glaze, you don't need much pressure? No, there's no need to apply any pressure. And you want to make sure you're going in one direction, just like when you're polishing. Yeah. Just do a 50-50 overlap, nice, thin, even coverage. See, just with those four drops, we were able to cover probably over half of the hood. Um, I got the, the hood scoop, I got the front badge and everything, that's just using four drops. Cool, so now you want to let this sit for about 15 minutes or so uh, to go ahead and cure with the paint, and then we're going to buff it off with the microfiber towel. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to keep doing the rest of the car, uh, and then come back and buff off. So now that we've waited for the 15 minutes for the Glossworks glaze to cure, it's ready to be buffed off on all the paint work. We're just taking a normal workhorse microfiber towel and you buff off the glaze in a straight line. You see it removes very easily. When you put on a thin, even coat, especially with a machine polisher, the glaze comes off lickety split. Now it makes it very easy to glaze an entire car just a few minutes. When you use the proper amount, 
you get the best look using the least amount of product. It's a very efficient way to coat an entire vehicle in just a few minutes. What happened to Jen? What are you talking about? Never mind. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now the silver Ferrari is looking awesome. And you can tell Alex has shorter arms because he can't reach over, buff off the glaze in the middle of the hood. Very cool. So now the vehicle is glazed. We've enhanced the look, make it look extremely wet, extremely shiny. Now we want to lock in that look with durable protection against the elements to help shield the car against things like pollution, brake dust, rail dust. So we're going to go on to a sealant. Now sealants like Jet Seal are just a synthetic wax. So we normally wax cars to help protect the vehicle against things like UV sunlight, pollution, contamination, water, birds, and bugs. But a synthetic sealant like Jet Seal gives all that same protection with a brilliant shine and it lasts for a longer period of time. So Jet Seal, if you maintain it and apply it correctly, can last for up to a full year with one application. Now just like before, all you need is a few drops on a machine pad with a soft finishing pad. And I'm just going to take my Torque 10FX with a red HexLogic quantum pad. I'm just going to dab these few dots out over the hood. And then I'm going to click the machine on. I only need to use a slow speed setting. I'm just going to use speed setting one. And I'm going to spread out the sealant over the hood. Also remember that you can use Jet Seal on these uh, headlights right here and you can use it on any kind of glass work. You can pretty much use it anywhere on the vehicle as long as it's not rubber, trim, or any kind of plastic pieces. Also remember that Jet Seal has a curing time of 15 to 20 minutes to properly bond onto the paint, any kind of glass work, or any kind of clear optical plastics as well. So yeah, when we brought this car and it was covered in dirt and all kinds of nasty junk. Swirls and scratches. The engine bay was pretty filthy. I mean, yeah. like, you saw the rainbows running out from underneath. Yeah, it was nasty. All the oil off. and grease. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But with just a normal wash, a clay bar service, <clears throat> and some light polish, we restored the paint and made it look brand new. So even on a 12-year-old Ferrari, this car looks like it's fresh off the showroom floor. All right, just to recap. We went ahead and we used uh, citrus washing gloss to wash the vehicle. We gave it a nice foam bath so it can strip out any kind of contaminants, any kind of road debris or any kind of grind that stuck onto the vehicle. Then afterwards we followed up with a clay block and we took out any kind of contamination that was embedded onto the paint. The paint started out very rough and at the end it's nice and silky smooth. Once we stripped out the contaminants, we used V36 to polish out any kind of um, miscellaneous scratches and swirls on the surface. And then we used V38 to give it a nice high polish. So it brought, brings back a lot of the luster, brings out the metallic fleck in the paint. Afterwards, we topped it off with uh, Glossworks glaze in order to glaze, fill in any kind of scratches or swirls to bring back a nice deep wet look to the vehicle. And after their Glossworks glaze, we finished off with Jet Seal. We want to protect what we did. We want to finish off our paint correction the right way. We always want to finish off with Jet Seal. Boom.